What's up guys, I'm Blake from Via Electronics, and this is another daily vlog. Uh, it's not really daily, but it's just a normal day. Now the reason why I've started a vlog is because the rest of my family is actually in Gulf Shores right now. Now I stayed here because it was kind of my personal choice to not go, because it was basically my brother and uh, his friends basically playing around in the Galveston Beach with white sand, is what I call it, it's really Gulf Shores Beach. And so I didn't really think that I would fit in much. So I just decided to stay home. It's been great. Everyone's still in Gulf Shores. They're coming home in a few days, which is probably after this has been uploaded. But I thought I'd just make a vlog kind of describing how to set up a janky home security system. How about that? So these are the cameras that I have been using for probably over four years. They haven't been great, but they're cheap and they're very user customizable. This one I actually don't have a power supply for, so I'm currently powering it off of this uh, kind of thing that I made. It is a USB to uh, 9 volt bail jack that is run actually running off of 5 volts because these cameras run off of 5 volts 2 amps. It says DC 5 volt there, but requires quite a powerful USB power supply. So I'm actually powering it off of the Airport Extreme because I figured out if I plug it into Ethernet it doesn't take up as much power than with wireless. So I'm actually not even using wireless right now. It's just on Ethernet. So I'm going to go ahead and plug the power back into this little camera. And I think this will be our experimentation camera. This is not where the camera is going to stay, obviously. <laughs> What is, what is there to show? The corner of my office? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, I've got a dehumidifier going because it is quite hot today and uh, the AC hasn't been running for a while since I've not been home. Let's see what the humidity is. Oh, 47. Decent. It is not purple on screen, that's just the white balance because I've locked it at the white balance of this little uh, light that I have. It has an orange gel to match the orange color temperature of all the rest of the lights in my house. See, that's too white. It's orange. If you want to know where I got this little light, it's actually quite a little inexpensive thing. It's with this, uh, I had the orange gel on, but it comes with a blue gel too. Uh, it's called the Aperture Amaran AL09. It uh, comes with a little hot shoe mount to connect it to the top of your DSLR or a camcorder with a hot shoe mount and whatnot. I'm actually using this as a filler light right now. Square face! Lucica. And it, here's where the second camera is. This is not the final place for it either. I just wanted one downstairs. This is the exact same camera, probably a little older actually. The, uh, I think this one's from my grandma's house. The one that I had had a different photo cell. This one has a little black one. The one upstairs has a um, kind of traditional type photo cell. So this is the one downstairs. This one's on Wi-Fi, has a proper power supply uh, supplied with the camera. So this can run off a of wireless. It can pan tilt all that stuff without losing power. Unlike the one upstairs, which can't pull enough power from USB to both pan and tilt the head and keep power going with wireless. This one can perfectly. So now that the cameras are properly on the network, I, I already did this earlier, but I'm going to show you how to find the IP addresses of the cameras so that you can get to uh, the built-in web GUI. So I'm going to go to Airport Utility because I have an Airport Extreme. Uh, this is the Airport Extreme that's working. These are some old devices that are not connected to the network anymore. And you can see this one device down here it says IP camera. 78A, whatever. I don't really know what those string of numbers and letters are, but as you can see, this uh, IP camera is properly on the network and it displays its IP address as 10.01.43. This is the wireless one. Unfortunately, I can't find the IP address to the Ethernet connected one. Uh, we'll just experiment with this one down here, which is connected to wireless. There's a different way to get Ethernet addresses, but I won't go over that right now. So, go to web browser and type in 1001390. The way that these cameras work, you can set the HTTP port to whatever, 
HTTP is unencrypted for those who don't know, so this isn't exactly um, super high security thing here. Anyone can really connect to it, but you still have to enter your username and password. Go ahead and sign in here, node 2 to view, which is the only one that I found actually works. And we're in the integrated web GUI. I'm going to go to network, and you can see it's displaying its IP address, subnets, and all these things. Uh, the HTTP port, by default, it's on 80, but a lot of cameras use port 80, so I would highly recommend not to use port 80 at all all. Change it to 85 or 90 or some other open port. If you don't know what ports are open, you can, if you're on a Mac, uh, go to Network Utility. Netro Utility? No. Network Utility. And do Port Scan. And you'll enter your own IP address, your own public IP address, which uh, I'm not going to give mine out, but go ahead and type your public IP address in here and scan for your open ports. See which ones are open. Um, in my experience, 85 and 90 were open, so that's what these cameras are on. See, we've got the wireless settings. Uh, it's, this one's connected to wireless. And you can also do alarms and stuff. Uh, I have mine set up on an email server. This will basically send emails to a Gmail address so that you can view motion events directly from Gmail. I also have FTP set up. So this is my FTP server. It's a private IP address because they're on the same network. It's actually this computer that we're on right now. So why don't we go ahead and minimize that and open up the server, new archive raid. And there's a folder in here called FTP. That's not what it's named. I named that myself. Go ahead and go FTP. And you see all these motion events that have been recorded over the past 30 minutes of me walking around everywhere. The way you set up FTP, you have to have an app called server, macOS server to be exact, and you can configure an FTP share uh, over your local network. So this, the FTP share is that folder that I created, New Archive Red FTP, and that's basically saying this will be the root uh, whenever you're connecting over FTP, this will be the root that you connect to. Permissions, only me, because I don't want anyone else connecting, plus it's only over the local network. You can also port forward FTP to be accessible outside the network, but I would not recommend that because FTP is unencrypted. So you can see it's not in public services. I only have these as uh, public services. VPN is very helpful. Maybe I'll do a future episode on VPNs. But basically the FTP allows you to save motion events in, in a folder on an FTP server. So that's quite helpful. Let's go back to the uh, web browser. Advanced, you get things like configuring your user settings. I only have one user because that is what I feel is the safest. If you have multiple users, especially multiple administrators, then you know, it's easier for people to guess your password and stuff. Multi-device, multi-dev, multi-device. I have not found this to actually work for some reason. I think this is only configurable through Windows, but in my experience, the uh, Internet Explorer option in the integrated GUI doesn't even work. If we go back home, this isn't even a link. It's just text that is lo that looks like a link. The only things that are links are mobile view, which is very unhelpful, and mode 2, which is for basically every single browser imaginable, which is what I like to use. Let's go ahead and set resolution back to 640 by 480. Uh, that is the maximum resolution on this camera. Other advanced are status LED. This should be um, the opposite way, because if you know anything about circuits, open is not connected, closed is connected. So this really should be closed, but I select open because I want the status LED to tell me what's going on. I just set all these to the maximum because it's very slow, even on the maximum. Uh, I don't know what this does. It really doesn't do anything which way you set it to. Maintains the boring stuff, uh, the device firmware, embedded web. Embedded is misspelled, actually, which is kind of hilarious. And I have my custom DDNS set up, swandvr.net. Uh, I actually use a service called noip.com, which I highly recommend. That will basically convert your public IP address to a outside dynamic DNS. That's basically how you can set up almost any IP camera. You just find its IP address. Now, if your camera doesn't have a built-in web GUI like this one, web UI, it's really GUI, it's graphical, uh, I recommend a service called AngelCam, 
me go ahead and show you how to set this up. I've already set it up with my two cameras. See, you can see the downstairs one and the upstairs one, which is not powered right now because we're not, I'm not demonstrating this one. But you can hear the dogs from downstairs because they're moving around a lot. I'm going to go ahead and connect a new camera to show you how you can connect a new camera using Angel Cam, which is a really cool service if you know your camera doesn't have a built-in thing. Uh, I'm using a Swan camera, which will basically add the uh, video stream.cgi to the outside. So I can basically type in slash slash, and then the username, and then the password, and then the uh, public IP address. And uh, this camera uses an HTTP address, so that's how it uh, can find it. That's basically the easiest way to get a private IP camera on the network. This can also be applied to a Raspberry Pi running MotionEye. Uh, if you have a Raspberry Pi and don't have one of these IP cameras, I would definitely recommend MotionEye for Raspberry Pi, which basically turns your Raspberry Pi into a little security camera. It even has its own built-in web GUI. You can see 1001190 is my MotionEye, which is not online right now, so it won't connect, but that's how you connect to basically any IP camera. Why are you so crazy? Oh, that's right. It's time to eat. Okay. You want to eat? For food? Oh, how am I going to get to the food? Well, thanks for watching this vlog. I think I got to go feed the dogs. Hopefully, I'll see you on another vlog. I don't really post that much. Maybe I might start posting more. See ya.